But in what ways do you feel like this team is different from that first meeting you had uh, in Tallahassee? I, I don't even know that I can answer that. If you'd asked me after the Louisville game, I would have told you some certain factors. You asked me after the Marquette game, <laughs> it'd be a whole different uh, uh, set of answers. Uh, uh, it is still, you know, and I get so tired of saying it myself, uh, but it's hard to read this team. I mean, with seven freshmen, I really thought we would be fired up to play Marquette, that it would be a uh, a big time feeling for us because we'd felt so good after the Louisville game. And, uh, uh, and I've said it after the game, we laid a rotten egg. So I, I, I can't tell you, I, we leave the locker room and I asked the coaches, we're walking out to the court and said, did you see their demeanor? And, uh, you know, we're, we just laugh about it because we don't know if they're being fired up or if I'm, uh, you know, getting them fired up or if I'm putting a damper on it because they just sort of look at me with a blank stare. But I think that, uh, youthfulness we got to got to get through that because uh, we got a big time game tomorrow and we did some good things down there uh, we made some shots down there we still turned it over way too much but we made some shots 10 threes or something like that which is one of our best games shooting the ball but we can't turn it over and give them the easy baskets either brandon marks Hey, Roy. Yeah, I know. I know you guys have already had to do it once before, but uh, trying to defend Scotty Barnes, just the different matchup challenges he presents. What what's sort of the strategy there and um, how have you seen his game evolve, too, since the last time you all played? Well, he didn't play the last time we played him. And so we haven't defended him. I saw Scotty play several times in high school, but uh, uh, it's it's an unusual thing. It's a six, eight guy that uh, brings the ball up the court and goes in and gets follow dunks on the offensive end. So uh it is unusual, but uh, I've seen him play many, many times with his own high school team. Uh, in summer, with the summer league things that were going on, I've probably seen Scotty play 20 or 30 games. He's a very gifted young man. Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach, you've had plenty of teams in the past where you kind of had a pretty good idea going into a game, what kind of production you were going to get from certain guys. There was a certain range, but from this team, uh, what is the challenge in kind of not really having any idea who's going to flare up from one night to the next and who's going to have a, a low production game from one night to the next? It's a very uncomfortable feeling. That's what it is. And, uh, you know, it, gosh, this is 33 years as a coach, and it's probably surprised me with their makeup, their reactions to my sayings and reactions to the plans, reactions to the tough. This, uh, you know, it's been different from anything that I've ever coached. And, uh, but again, and it's, uh, it sounds like an excuse, and that's not uh, what I'm intending it to be. I'm just trying to find a reason. Uh, but uh, uh, the youthfulness of this club is just something that is really, really unusual. I mean, somebody said that our team was in age where there were only like 25 teams in the country younger than we are. Uh, my gosh, I'd hate to see how they react in certain situations if there's somebody younger than we are. Greg Barnes. Hey, Roy, what is the, the primary challenge for this team in defending the three-point shot? Greg, I didn't hear the first part. I heard challenge was the first word I heard. Yeah, just what is the primary challenge for this team in defending the three? Just so many guys on their team that can shoot it. I mean, you know, a lot of teams will have a big guy that you don't have to worry, or they'll have one guy on the perimeter that's a driver. All their guys shoot the ball. I mean, from three-point line, they're shooting – 39% for the year from three point line. And they got a guy shooting 46, uh, uh, Raekwon Gray, Gray shooting 26. I think he's one of the best shooters they have. Uh, look down here, Anthony Polite shooting 47, Raekwon Evans 40, uh, Calhoun off the bench 46. Uh, Matt, Wyatt Wilkes, his uh, grandfather was a great college coach, one of their best shooters. He's at 36, I mean, to me, Armando's going to have to get out to the three-point line and defend somebody. Uh, Dayron's going to have to get out there. You go down the line, every pass, I'm just looking, Copravica is one for one, so I'd take that with anybody too. So I think it's just that everybody can shoot them. Everybody can put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket. So they don't have somebody that you can say, he's a driver, okay, give him some space. They don't have somebody else that's just a shooter. You know, Jack and, and uh, Wilkes probably shoot a higher percentage of threes in their shot attempts, but they can put the ball on the floor as well. So to me, it's just that uh, 
it's difficult because everybody on the team can shoot a three-point shot. And probably other than the big guy, everybody on their team has had games where they've made multiple threes. And that, to me, is the most unusual thing. Adam Smith. Roy, when you, when you talk about maybe getting that feeling, you personally getting that feeling that, oh, no, the, the focus might not be there tonight and, and maybe even having – when you said having a laugh with some of the coaches on the way out of the door, like what – is there a particular tale that you get, like when you see something or feel something with this group? Is there a particular thing that sets your radar off about that type of stuff? Well, in teams that we've had in the past – uh, over time, I've been able to read their reactions and feelings and, you know, the looks they're giving me in the locker room. Uh, but, again, it's it's such a new team. I'm looking and I'm, I haven't gotten any clue yet about what they're thinking. And, uh, I mean, guys, uh, Garrison and Andrew have been here four years, but Garrison was one of the main uh, guys last year. Andrew really never has been, except he's gotten a little more time with the rest of the team, I mean, you even add Armando. I can't – I won't be able to figure Armando out when he's 90. And uh, so it it is a little bit of that. But, yes, I've had teams in the past that I'd say, we're going to play great tonight. And I've had teams say, all right, guys, now you give me some concern. And I've had got teams that I've walked out to the locker room and I said, I have no idea what their thought process is. But this team this year, uh, it's that third choice almost every single night. Josh Graham. Coach, even though it's just for the last two home games, how pleased are you there's going to be a little bit more of an atmosphere in the Smith Center? Well, I really like it for our players. I mean, I've been there before when it's 21,750 screaming and going crazy, and it's a phenomenal feeling running out the tunnel. It's not going to be that, but it is going to be a lot better, and I think the kids will enjoy it more. I think that uh, hopefully the crowd will give us a lift. I usually think you get more of a lift on the – defensive end of the floor and we're going to need that against Florida State I mean they're one of the leading scorers if not the leading scoring team in the league they're one of the most efficient teams are I mean guys they're shooting like I said that's us I start to say that didn't look that good uh 48 percent from the floor 39 from 374 from the foul line so they are an efficient team so we need to be as good as we can be on the defensive end Kip Coons, and then uh, Kip's the last one with his hand raised, so raise your hand again if you uh, want a question with Coach. Yeah, hi, Roy. Uh, the one thing that Leonard has been able to do with, with Florida State year in, year out is, is wear teams down with his depth and his size, and yet those are pretty good requisites for you as far as uh, you know, your team. Uh, you've got depth. You've got a lot of size. Do you think that is a good matchup uh, for you against them? Well, it is something that I like to build just like Leonard does. The only difference is that his size is a lot more mature. Uh, that's the only difference. I mean, yeah, they're the, whatever it means, the second biggest team in the country, and we're still up there pretty good as well. But it's everybody wants talent, okay, talent. And then you want experienced talent. Uh, that's what you really want. Uh, because then you've got what you need is you have the experience and you have talent. And that's what everybody is is trying to have. Some of the coaches talk about getting old and staying old. And I would love that, too, if it was experienced uh, old and experienced talent. That Again, that's the best. But, uh, you know, there is a difference. There is a difference. And uh, I think that uh, uh, you go look at their club and guys who have been there uh, Scotty is a freshman, and uh, I can't remember. But they lost a lot from last year's club, but they played a lot of people. And those same guys are still doing a good job for them this year. But, uh, Kip, I, I've always said that's what I would like to have is at least eight guys who are really, really good. But if you've got ten, that's even better. But eight guys that are really, really good and then some hard workers you can fill in that part. Uh, but Leonard is very comfortable playing up to – 10 or 11, I assume he is, because he keeps doing it up to 10 or 11 guys in the first half all the time. I got time for three more, CL, then Adam, then Brendan. Go ahead, CL. Roy, you mentioned after that Marquette game uh, about the play you called, and then they went out and did something different. How how have you used that as a teaching point in practice? And, and because that happened, do you feel like they'll be more focused on Saturday? 
Uh, the only thing I know is I don't believe we'll see that happen again in my lifetime. That's the only, that's one way to put it. And uh, I believe in total freedom, uh, but don't go out there thinking that you've watched six games like Steve Robinson did and think you know what's best to run at that particular time. If we're in freelance, guys get total freedom. That's the reason we call it freelance. They can dribble handoff, they can screen, they can do, I mean, it's freelance is free. But if I call a set play, there's a reason. And uh, so let's just put it that way. I don't think that we'll see that happen anymore. Adam Smith. Roy, your, your next win will be viewed by people as a milestone, whether you view it that way or not. It'll be a, another big round number. Um, as, as these things have come during your career, uh, I know you've kind of downplayed them publicly, but it is, was, was passing Coach Smith, was that – the one that sat with you the most when you sort of took it all in, what, as these things have piled up, what, what has registered with you? What have you gone back and cherished? Well, you, you know, the number one thing is I don't just play it down in public. I play it down myself. The one that was most meaningful to me and it was a little emotional was tying coach Smith. That was, that was meaningful to me. I could have walked off the court that night and never coached another game and I wouldn't have worried about having one more than Coach Smith. That would not have – that's just not me. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in the moment. You know, maybe, but I'm going to say it's a big maybe down the road. Uh, well, I look at some number and say, yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, and the reason – just thinking about when you say in a round number, uh, the best round of golf I've ever played in my life, I shot 70. And that was at Pine Valley. But I shot 69 five times, and 69 is not a round number. I like that number better than 70. You know, so 899 and 900, you know, one's round, one's not. You know, it's uh, – uh, I, I am totally not 90%, not 95%. I'm 99.99999 focused on trying to get 15. The only thing and the reason I left out that one thousandth percentage point, I guess, is because you daggum guys keep asking me about it. And I keep writing about it. Brendan. Yeah. Remember, 69 is a better number than 70, boys. <laughs> it ain't round, but it's a better number. <laughs> Brendan Marks. Hey, Coach, I'd be lucky to ever shoot 69 or 70. But uh, I, I wanted to ask you about Caleb. He had, you know, that great game against Duke a couple of weeks back. Um, it, it seemed like he was sort of turning a corner, but he scored only 20 points since then. Um, the efficiency hasn't been quite what it was up to then too. Uh, do you get a sense that he's still just figuring things out or, um, you know, what, what are sort of the next steps you would like to see from him and his progression? Every day trying to get better and every day trying to listen to what we're saying and getting better. And again, it's, it's, I feel like I'm a stuck record over here. It's, he's a freshman. I have no, uh, no idea, no idea, no. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a new world. That's all I can tell you. I mean, Marcus Page came in here, and and some of you guys didn't think he was going to be very good. And and, and you, you can deny it or not, but if we had the transcripts, we'd go back in the press conference. I was asked so many, you sure you think he's going to be that good? But his freshman year, he was pretty doggone good. Caleb at Duke was fantastic. And, in fact, at Florida State, RJ was really, really good. Uh, but, guys, I don't know. I mean, you know. Maybe if you've seen a guy who's been married five times, ask him if you know what makes his fifth wife tick. I'm in the same spot because I don't know what these guys are. Wicked Wanda knows me and I know her, but fifth wife, I wouldn't know. And seven freshmen, I still don't know. They'll be surprised at that analogy, my God. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Coach.